Welcome to Fish on Filter, presented by MPT College Consulting. It is Tuesday, March 19th, 2024, just over a week away from the Marlins season opener. My name is Isaac Azud, joined today by Mr. Eli Sussman. Kevin Barral is out, probably covering some sort of FIU athletic endeavor. But we have a very special guest here today, Mr. Craig Mish. Craig, it's not your first time joining us. We really appreciate the time as always. How's it going? Wow, what timing! A lot happening in in uh, in Marlins land here. Ironically, nothing on the field, right? Like, I mean, I guess there's some topics on the field to get to. I feel like when it's the non-field topics, that's when you call me in. That's when I get called in to to talk about everything that's going on. But I mean, you guys have done a fantastic job this spring. You know, like I I am checking all of your guys' accounts every day when I have time to see like what's happening and. Uh, I mean, you guys have been like just doing a phenomenal job doing it. It's like, I, I, and one part it like reminds me, I hate to sound old, of when I was young and like so hungry and wanting to be there and do it every day. But I feel like I'm sort of doing it through you guys. So you guys definitely deserve a round of applause as we come to the end of, of spring training. It's been it's been cool every day not being on and then just like popping on and just seeing what you guys have to say. And I feel like at that point, uh, I'm kind of caught up on the day. We appreciate the words, Craig. And to be fair, we did ask you to come on before this jazz stuff dropped. We'll get to that True. in a little bit. But let's talk about who's going to be on the mound in 2024 and who won't be. Is Craig, at least three fifths of the start of the projected starting rotation will start the season on the IL. The most prominent one you see on the screen, Mr. Yuri Perez. He left his last spring start with discomfort in his right middle finger, and he later complained of right elbow soreness. Not exactly what you want. He was scheduled to see Dr. Keith Meister, the orthopedic surgeon that uh, performed on Sandy Alcantara's right arm. Is is this going to be as bad as it seems, Mr. Craig? Well, look, I, I mean, we have to let the entire process play out. Again, this comes down in the end to the player's decision as to what they want to do. We've seen this go a lot of different ways. I don't know Garrett Cole's situation, but reading into that a little bit, my guess is that could have gone either way. Uh, Justin Verlander, you may remember a couple of years ago, he, I think, held off for a while, and then he ended up having the surgery. And so, uh, you know, Sandy Alcantara is another good example. If I'm, if, you know, we're speaking clearly here, I mean, it was pretty evident, I think, early on that, that when Sandy got checked out, that he was going to have to have the surgery, but Sandy did not want to miss the postseason. He wanted to try to get back. And kind of felt like the season, if he was going to have to have the surgery, would have cost him anyway. So he delayed it. And, I, you know, I don't know where that is in terms of that conversation. I, I think over the next day or two, we'll probably get more clarity on this, where it's at. But look, at this point, I think it's fair to say you, you have to start thinking about what other options the Marlins are going to have at the very least in the early part of the season, if not the entire season. Now, again, I don't know the answer as of right now as we're doing this, but I do anticipate knowing soon. I do, I do think we'll know soon. Yeah, well, regardless of exactly how this plays out, it's got to be so frustrating for everybody involved with the team because last year, one of the biggest storylines around the entire team was managing his workload and exactly what his innings would be. You got so many questions throughout the year. What's oh his gosh, innings yeah. going to be? When is he going to get sent down? When is he going to be taking a break? And like they went through all of that specifically because to try to keep him healthy, to, not just for that 2023 season, but for 2024 and beyond. Uh, and despite all the information that these teams have about arm health and conditioning, at the end of the day, it just doesn't seem like this stuff is avoidable, is it? Yeah, and, and I think that's a good point because last year people in the organization were saying like, you know, is shutting him down going to correlate to anything in the future? And and other people thought we, you know, we have to shut him down to protect his future, and that just shows you the uncertainty mm -hmm. uh, as, as to workload and velocity. Maybe that's you know something we should be talking about too is the increase in velocity. All of a sudden, the players are all getting hurt. When I was growing up in the '80s and the '90s, you know, Nolan Ryan threw real hard. Doc Gooden threw real hard, and that was about it. Nobody got hurt. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, everybody throws real hard. Everybody's hurt. So, look, I I, I think it is frustrating. I, I think in time, there's a, a little bit more of a story to be told here that I think maybe will enlighten more people about Yuri Perez and and sort of uh, you know the last few years of his career and 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 what's been you know kind of going on here too, and maybe the reason why 
there's been a little bit more caution with this. But again, uh, you know, we, we really at this point don't know the exact outcome of it. But uh, I, I, I want to say that from my understanding, just to be clear here, because I'm getting a lot of this. So I'll just say it. So we, before you guys even ask is that I don't think the fingernail had anything to do with the elbow. I, I don't think that this was correlated over use, trying to throw different pitches. I really don't believe so. I've asked people that I trust and I, and I don't think that is to be the case. So this is not something that we should be throwing tomatoes at the Marlins or anything like that. I don't believe that's the case. Okay, because this did sort of remind me of 2013-14, Jose Fernandez. He was babied in 2013. He started the year on the um, in the rotation, and then in 2014, he underwent Tommy John surgery as well. And so it just sort of proves that really, you know, babying these young pitchers does not – No. Uh, it does not guarantee that they're going to be healthy, even just the following year, like in Yuri's case. But as of right no. now, correct and Right. And by the, and by the way, listen, we could play revisionist history here if we wanted to. And look, I, I know that there was, I think it was a back issue, if I'm not mistaken, for Yuri at the end of last year, but I think they shut him down anyway. Like they didn't want him right. to pitch. So we could play that now and wonder in Philadelphia, uh, you know, who would have got the ball? You know, who would have got the ball at that point? Um, you know, we knew that Sandy wasn't going to pitch in the series. What would have happened if Yuri Perez pitched in game two? I was at both of those games. There were, there were, one was over before it started. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, it's just interesting to think about. But, it, again, we'll, we'll know very soon. I, I think it's fair for everyone to, you know, obvi obviously look at some of these other options that, that they have yeah. and start talking about them. Perfect, because we will talk about some of those options now. And I think you put out a really realistic tweet at what exactly the Marlins could be looking at when it comes to their starting rotation depth. And it's going to be a lot of former relievers, a lot of guys that have not been healthy for yeah. much of their career. It's gonna, after Luzardo, who, you know, who knows? But after Luzardo, it's A.J. Puck, Trevor Rogers, Ryan Weathers. And then you then you really have a battle for the fifth spot, whether it's Brian Hoeing, Max Meyer, is there any before we talk about the internal options? Is there any chance that they go outside the organization for rotation help? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Believe me, I I've asked, I've asked, I, I am I am concerned. You know, like and, and by the way, you know, I, I think there's there's two different questions to to be asked of me. Is that is my concern about the Marlins winning and losing, and is that relevant to this? Or is my concern the fact that they're just going to like run out of guys and like not have a lot of innings? I got to tell you, it's the second part of this because right. as we go further into the spring without Sandy and potentially without Yuri for a long period of time, and just the way that the offense is constructed with like three reliable guys, like I think you kind of see where the writing is here. It's like I don't know, like is there are they going to be good? Like <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard to say based on everything that happened last year. So like for me, it's like. Looking at the the players who are out there, uh, you know, why wouldn't they add like just somebody to eat some innings to save some of these arms? And, and I don't know the answer to that. And the only thing that I could think of is they're kind of like, all right, well, it is what it is. And you hate to think that way. But, you know, truth be told, you know, Michael Lorenzen, he's out there. And, and what would Michael Lorenzen do? Uh, you know, his war was like one or two. So that's like a plus one for the Marlins or a plus two. You know, they're just not going to do that, I don't think. But... I thought like Jake Odorizzi would have been the perfect guy. I know that he would have signed with the Marlins on an NRI and they could have just parked him in the minors and, and then, you know, needed him break glass in case, you know, like just call him up and maybe they, they're still going to have to do that. I think they will. That's my concern is, is you, you're, you're losing 200 from Sandy, maybe a hundred from Yuri. I mean, that's 300 innings that they're trying to replace with AJ Puck and Trevor Rogers. Like, you know, and, and, and listen, you guys, again, have been out there a lot more than me. And that, to me, another underreported story that we're going to have to find out here in the next few days is Trevor Rogers. Like, what's going on here? Like, his velocity was way down his last start. He says he's OK. Every guy says they're OK. Like, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, that we absolutely have to. And, and it may go fine for him next time. And then it's much ado about nothing could be true. But boy, isn't isn't his next spring start a really important start, too? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And when it, I think all of these guys just have huge question marks. You mentioned Trevor Rogers. His velocity was down. Ryan Weathers, he, he looked great in the beginning part of sprint, but his last start, he was getting hit pretty hard by the yeah. Cardinals. A.J. Puck hasn't started in the Major League game in a very long time. And then after that, who the hell knows? So No, you don't know. And, and, the, and the other part of this, too, Isaac, and you were at the same table that I was at for this conversation. I mean, if you think back to the conversations that were had during the winter meetings, yes. there 
there was not a single person that thought Ryan Weathers was opening up in the rotation, let alone the two or the three to start the season. I mean, come on. I mean, they're already sort of playing with fire here a little bit, and maybe it'll work out, and Mel just waves the wand again with another guy, and he's good. It's possible. But let's get real here. Like, that was like the sixth or seventh guy to start the season. They may need him to start the second game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, another option that, you know, he was already – Option to Triple A Jacksonville, third overall pick in 2020, Max Meyer. Very confident young man. He probably thinks he's ready. He only has one major league star that I'll give him. He obviously started that game in Pittsburgh, which he left. Is there a scenario where he opens a season in the opening day rotation? I, I guess. I really haven't heard that he will, but at this point, I, I don't know how many other places there are to turn. They could be careful with him and start him off in AAA, he's clearly going to be on an innings limit coming off Tommy John. I don't know what that'll that'll be, maybe 100. I mean, he hasn't, he hasn't thrown that much in how many years, I'm not sure. So that, that would be a guess. They could go that route, but I, I don't know that they will. And they still have him, I believe, in minor league camp, right? So yeah. I, I, your, your guess is sort of as good as mine. I, I guess that, that would be another signal, by the way, to me, if I was like thinking about the season and thinking about being competitive and all that. Like if Max Meyer is not called upon to make one of the first, you know, two starts, 10 games into the season, it kind of tells you right. like a little bit like, you know, where are we at here? You know, like, I don't know. It's, you know, there, there's some signs that I watch for throughout and that would be one of them too, if they choose not to use it right away. Well, somebody who's not in the rotation mix, but everybody is very excited about Sixto Sanchez. This spring, Sixto, six innings pitched, one hit, zero runs, He's averaging 95 on his fastball. He's topping out at 99. I was there myself to see the most scintillating ending of spring training when he was dotting high 90s on the corners. He's almost certainly going to make this team, and it looks like he's earned it as a reliever. Craig, you have been very skeptical of Sixto sure. during his eternal rehab process. It is one of the unusual journeys that we've ever seen, given Definitely. how long it took to get back. But are you ready to... Take the L, as they say. Admit that maybe you wrote him off a little bit too soon. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Like, like you know what's, what's really interesting is, is the fact that, like, so many people want to point out that I'm wrong about this. And, yes, like, it's very possible that I am. But, like, I've been so wrong about so many other things. Like, like blatantly awful takes that I've had through the last 5, 10, 20 years that this seems to be the one that people are really gravitating to, which is fine. Look, I said here that we never had to talk about him ever again. I think that was the direct quote that I said, right? So, uh, you know, and betting against that the last three years, I would be right. And finally, for a month, this is the first time that I'd be wrong about this. Look, I'm still skeptical. It has nothing to do with a take or just wanting to be right. I, I mean, I, I, I've, seen, I've seen everything you guys have seen. He's now getting out major league hitters. He's now pitching multiple innings. I mean, all systems seem to be go with him making the team. But again, it's a, an injury that he had that does tend to pop up. I don't know if it will again, but you have to give cr credit to Sixto, I guess, yeah. after four years deciding that he wanted to do it. Like, what happened the last four years? I don't know. Like, did he really want to? I, I don't know. So I'm not going to sit here and champion the guy. That I'm not going to do because they've missed him for several years. But I will say this probably two years ago, uh, somebody that I was talking to about this in the organization where I was like, come on, like it's enough already. It's enough already. I'll never forget. They told me he's going to come back. You're going to see. I don't know when it's going to be. I don't know how. And the comparison was Caprellian. Remember James Caprellian? No. Like he, he just like disappeared for several years. And then all of a sudden like resurfaced and just started pitching again. And, and I think Astros fans are thinking that with Forrest Whitley too. Like, like I, I think that there's maybe a lesson to be learned that you like never, ever completely close the door on anything until the retirement papers are sent in. And I guess that's the lesson here. But I mean, saying that he's been done for three years has been accurate. So this is obviously the best development and the most stunning development, I would say, for the Marlins during the spring. I would agree. You weren't by yourself when you thought that, you know, it was pretty much over for this player. Eli completely, wrong. completely wrong. 
but all, but but you guys, but the guys and girls out there, you have to do a better job. Like I have so many horrible takes that I've had. Right. That and, and by the way, I, I would you believe that when Sixto pitched the first time in the spring, the first time I was there, I was there for two of his. Somebody just direct messages me like like I'm like the worst and like you know you were wrong. I'm like really like wow like this is this is where you want to go. Like everyone wants to hop on Sixto Sanchez. Let me tell you something. If people knew what has gone on the last few years with this guy, uh, I mean, you, you you still would be happy for the guy succeeding, but you would not have this 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 take. I mean, some of this stuff, guys, is very much self inflicted. The reason why he's not pitching, or he hasn't pitched. Right, that's fair. Well, today, Craig, we'll we'll shift gears here a little bit. Jazz Chisholm Jr. Uh, made an appearance on the Pivot podcast, and I was really hit with a curveball from this. You <laughs> you looked at the Me first. I I was like, whoa, when did he even have time to do this hour-long podcast? So we got to try to get him on for something like this. But the main point of emphasis on his end anyway seemed to be just how the culture has shifted. The te- quote-unquote team captain that he referred to multiple times, that he didn't wake him up, and that the team captain tried to get him out of there. Does that match your interpretation of the situation? You know, this is this is crazy that this has come up like this. And you know what happened was I I, I don't know somebody you know what maybe I you know now I don't some I don't want to I don't want to take guesses here. Somebody knew that I would be interested in this because the pivot <laughs> sent this to me. They sent this to me today. No way. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, huh? What's this? And you know, I went to school with Fred Taylor. Uh, he does the podcast, so I was like, and you know, Channing, I've known. So I, I wanted to listen, you know, clearly. And I think when I hit it, like their first run play was going on on YouTube. I don't know if it was live at the time. Maybe it was. I don't think so. Maybe it was. No, it couldn't have been. He was playing. So like I caught it like halfway and heard a couple, a little bit of that. And I was like, whoa, like this is going to be something that I'm going to have to go back and listen to. But so, so I posted on social media one of the comments about the sleeping and everything like that. But there's a lot crazier stuff on there than that. Like, if you go back and listen to the whole thing, like, it is, like, the stuff is being said is way worse. So there, there's a couple of things. As far as, like, interpretation, I've been down this road already, you know? And I think it's pretty obvious to most people that Jazz, in some of the context in the podcast, I don't know about it all, but in some of it, he refers to Miguel Rojas, former shortstop and the uh, uh, captain of the Marlins, and and I think people will remember back a couple of years ago. Uh, one second here. Uh, okay, when all when all of this happened, that there was like, I mean, he and I like we we have we completely fractured, broken relationship over this because of previous podcast that I did, and you know I you know I I wanted to make amends and try to work it out, and never ended up happening. We crossed paths since then. And so the last thing that I want to do is like rehash all of that and get into it. Cause that was like a really tough time. It was for me. I'm sure it was for him too, because no, nobody wants to be, uh, you know, going after whether it's media and I don't ever want to be part of like a story. It just like kind of, you know, ended up happening that way. So I feel bad about the whole situation, but jazz is an entertainer and whatever he is going to say, it's going to be to, you know, to, to get people to watch, to get people to listen I mean, he talked so much about that in the one hour. It was sort of shocking uh, to be rehashed to that degree. Some of the stuff I had heard, yeah. I mean, so, some of the stuff I had heard, which is why two years ago I I talked about that. So it's not a matter of me agreeing or disagreeing, but I could just confirm that, yes, some of that stuff I did hear. But what about that meeting was the <laughs> wildest thing you ever heard from a personal individual standpoint? Because it was like... It was never, like, it was nothing about baseball. Like, it was nothing to do with baseball at all. So, like, that's what made it so wild to me because, like, we're having a whole team meeting with guys that I don't even talk to off the field. Uh, some, some of the stuff I did not hear, which, you know, Jazz said, and, you know, Jazz and I have a great relationship, but I would tell Jazz, I don't believe the first baseman was purposely dropping the ball on, on, on balls you threw to him. I, I really, I just don't think so, man. <laughs> like jazz i don't think so I, i'm not positive if you could show me the video of that i'm with you man but that that is a little bit for a little bit crazy for me to believe that that was happening that uh that the errors were, were, made, were made on purpose 
But hey, you never know. Maybe it was. Maybe somebody now can produce all those videos to show that. Because to me, that was where like the shark was jumped. I was like, whoa, like this is like this is getting crazy. So, uh, and it was it entertaining? Did everybody watch it? Are people going to watch it? Yes. Uh, is Jazz a massively fun, entertaining guy? Of course he is. I mean, we're all engaged with everything that he said. I think like the first time he ever said something, I was like, like, are you sure you? I think I tell him like, are you sure you want to do this? He's like, Craig, you just got to enjoy the ride here. Just, just, I'm just telling you now, just go with it. Just go along. I'm like, all right, fine, no problem. Then if this is the way uh, it's going to go, but it's going to get a lot of views. It's going to get a lot of clicks. I don't know if it'll get a response. I guess we'll we'll end up seeing if it does but it's uh it, it was a crazy i it, it brought me back to the time a couple of years ago i think it was june when that happened and the yeah. team meeting and you know me trying to you know understand what happened with miggy and all that and you know definitely not the best memories of my time covering the marlins just because it was met with such uh ferocity at the time but uh i i hope jazz got what what he wanted out of it and you know some of the some of the things Jazz says are obviously you know real. I mean, real like a lot of it, I'm sure. But I've always learned with Jazz, you know, some things I, I've learned when to know he's 100 percent on, and when I have to add some percentages against it. Like you guys, have, you guys have learned that too. Like every time he's been hurt, he's coming back tomorrow, right? Like he's, every time, right? And it gets and it gets reported. Oh, oh, the good news is Jazz says he's feeling fine. He's gonna be back in line tomorrow, and he's out for the year. Right. This has happened like how many times already? So like like examples like that. So there's probably some stuff in there that's like that, too. But he was really open and honest. And by the way, stuff about his family members. I don't know if you guys watch the end all being murdered over the last couple of years. I mean, yeah, there's there's some heavy, heavy hitting in there, too, as well. Yeah. I mean, the, the other side of it is like him not only putting some fault on his veteran teammates, but also kind of admitting himself that he was. He would explain that like he wouldn't practice with his teammates. He would only when he was celebrating, he would only look for his friends and family in the stands that he didn't really like make the effort on his end to be a good teammate as well. Like, I guess the only hope is as messy as those years were that now that he is surrounded by he considers more of his teammates now to be genuine friends of his that he's seems so appreciative of Skip and his managerial style that yep. even though like he's been around a while. As he mentions on the pod, he's still a young guy. He still just turned 26. That maybe this is he is finally in a situation where it all actually comes together. He's already he's had some of the accolades. He's been on the video game cover, but yep. I think there is a perception, like understandably, that he's an overrated player, that he's been getting a lot more attention than his actual production merits. But I guess as long as he, if he feels he's turned the page on like this Rocky episode of his life, what he calls the worst few years of his life, then I, I at least the future might be brighter. At least maybe this is kind of the year where he actually yeah. is available and is productive and all the immaturity of most of the, some of the immaturity of his past, he kind of leaves behind. Maybe this was, maybe this was something that he wanted to do and, and maybe this was cathartic for him to, go off like this i think some people would think that this wasn't the way to do it but i mean a, a lot of that podcast was discussed as you said eli about he kept saying like those were the worst three years and you know i hated everything and the only thing i wanted to do was play baseball i used to come to the park he said uh early at two o'clock and no one would see him like look I, I can't quantify all these things like the story that he told about his sneakers being cut up I mean, there's no reason to make that up, but I, I've never heard that. That was that was the very first time that I had heard that story about somebody cutting a sneaker and putting milk in there. N news to me, and haven't asked anybody to verify that either. So, again, he he is the ultimate entertainer. He's you know, I, I he is a guy that just wants you to enjoy the show. Uh, this does come at the expense of some other people who played with the Marlins. There's no question about that. And so there, there's going to be sides taken on this, I would guess too, as far as as far as that is concerned. But what I've learned about sports is that a lot of times we are very critical of athletes and executives for saying nothing, and then here we have a guy that's saying everything. Right. So, you know, I, I I think from an entertainment point of view, this was entertaining to hear. But again, there's some very personal shots 
taken at other people, at, you know, players who, who played for the Marlins. And I will be curious to see if there's any response from that. At MPT College Consulting, they pride themselves on helping clients navigate the college application process. This includes preparation for standardized testing, guidance through high school, assistance with essays and applications, and choosing the right college. Their work is always geared toward the specific needs of the individual client as they strive to make this process as stress-free for the family as possible. Visit them at mptcollegeconsulting.com to learn more about their services and schedule a free consultation. Relationships aside, I'm actually curious to see, you know, which side you guys would be on here because you know, one of the sides is, hey, listen, you're not a veteran like those guys that you've mentioned, Craig, and if they want you to get your shit together, that's fair. But also, you know what, you guys are teammates and your teammates should have your back. Your teammate shouldn't let you sleep through a team meeting. So like, there sort of needs to be a balance there. I'm just curious, like, what side do you think you would be on there, Craig, in that situation? Because I, I well, sort of look, see Jazz. Yeah, I, yeah, look, Jazz is culpable for a lot of stuff over the last few years. There's no, there's no doubt about it. Like, as far as, uh, you know, he said himself, not maybe not eating right, uh, you know, being, he said he was late every day to stuff. Like, like, I, I think he said that he was late, like all the time. And now he's not, now he said that he's, I'm not late anymore because I want to be there. So that means that he would late all the time, you know? And, and look, people in the organization tell me this sort of stuff too. So I, so I've heard it. Uh, so look, it, it's not a matter of sides. The only thing that I, you know, go back to, and I hate to do it again, I go back to is I don't know the entire cusp of what happened over the course of years with jazz. And it seems like if you probably asked him, he would take culpability for some of that. Even some of the talks he said he had with, uh, with Derek Jeter too, about how like, uh, Jeter was telling him to do one thing. He's like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be my own guy. And he said that yeah. I wish that that, uh, that I had him now here so he could see who I am now as opposed to who I was then. But I, the only thing I can go back to was the actual meeting, you know? And that was the one where, like, I asked so many. It was so crazy that day. And I just remember asking so many questions. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, in that spot, getting a unanimous sort of answer as to how that went. And the culpability of that, like, I, I, I can't, it's, it's not my opinion to have, guys. Like, this is what I was told. And that's why so much trouble was caused with me and with when I went with Peter. And again, with Miggy getting upset, me getting upset. It was just based on things that I was told and I wasn't there. So I can only go off that. There would be some people, Isaac, that would say, well, you weren't there. So how would you know? But this is like covering sports. Like, like there's a reason why reporters say source <laughs> because you're being told something without actually being there. You're right. sending a text or a tweet from a garage, like me. Like, I, but, but again, I can only go based off that. Is that the right thing to do? Is that the wrong thing to do? I don't know. But I sourced it. I sourced that story extraordinarily well at the time. Right. It was not one or two or three or five. When you go that route, you have to make sure you have your bases covered. And so I did at that point, And I learned, I thought I had learned at that point that the meeting in particular was an out of bounds meeting. That's what I heard at the time, which is what I reported. And, uh, and then things steamrolled from there. Uh, I guess the last thing from that podcast is just to touch on that. He, he said he had one guy on his side, which is ironically though, the guy who only spent what this, I think 29 games with them in 2020. And then it was eventually dealt in 2021, Starling Marte. I personally didn't even see that they had that close of a relationship. But oh, they the did. Oh, well, they definitely did. But that's all. But that's not true. Jazz is that. That's not true. Other guys were very much on his side at, during that time. That's that's not. I mean, maybe that was the only guy that he could really talk to privately. I look. I don't. I don't know all the relationships. But in terms of of like players that would have defended him, he had a lot more than that. Multiple right. uh, players. I mean, remember, it wasn't he at a charity event last year where he said that Berger and Bell was like his best friends. They'd been on the team yeah. for like a week, right? Yeah. So yeah. You, have to, you have to take some of this, you know, as entertainment. It's like that movie you watch where it's like this is inspired by true events, right? Like, <laughs> it kind of feels a little bit like that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe this is all exactly how it went down. But I always feel like with Jazz, there's, there's, a little, there's a little bit of that. I always go back to the injuries, you know. Jazz is like... Right. You know, it's like the foot is hanging off the leg. He's like, you know, I'm going to be in there tomorrow. And then, oh, yeah, Jazz says he's going to be in there tomorrow. He's feeling very good. And we, we can expect to see him tomorrow. Like, what, are you, what are you talking about? Like, it's not happening. 
He took BP at the All Star game on the IL. They were trying to find the guy. Like he took BP. I don't think he was supposed to. And then he like disappeared at the All Star game in LA. And they were looking for him, like to tell him, hey, like you can't do that. Like you can't participate in the physical events at the All Star. But they couldn't find him. They were asking me, have you seen Jazz? Have you seen Jazz? Like, I haven't seen. Yeah. Well, by the, by the time most people listen to this, the actual regular season is going to get underway in all, all the way on the other side of the world. And we're only a week away from the Marlins starting their season. I wanted to get your take. If there's anybody in particular on this Marlins team that you're optimistic could have some kind of breakout or, or I guess you conclude some kind of huge bounce back compared to last year. Let's exclude jazz from the conversation. And okay. We'll, we'll exclude Sixto because I, I I think you've made it clear where you stand still. We'll see. Great. Yeah, still very wait and see on that situation. Is there anybody yeah. else, either you personally or somebody or people that you trust think could actually have a pretty sizable impact on this team in 2024? Yeah, I mean, it's a little similar to last year. I don't, I don't look. I don't, I don't see Josh Bell getting much better. We have a lot of data on him for years. Jake Berger was amazing when he came over, so I don't, I know how much better he can be. Uh, Tim Anderson, I would guess, has got to be better. So I, I think that their offense kind of will be similar to what it was last year. De La Cruz gets hot for two and a half months. The rest of the time, you're like, this guy shouldn't be playing. Uh, you know, Jesus Sanchez, as long as he's playing against right-handed pitching, for the most part, will be very, I, I think, valuable to the team. There'll be some platooning going on, too. So I, I think in the end, guys, this may go back to exactly what we saw a year ago, which is like Garrett came up and he surprised, like, who will be that pitcher that comes up? Because they seem to have the secret sauce with the pitching. And maybe this doom and gloom outcome of the starting pitching isn't even fair because all of a sudden we're going to be talking about somebody that we're not now that ends up making 20 starts for them this year. Maybe it's not even Weathers. But people have asked me also in the, like the fantasy community, like the, the player – that that I would want, you know, for the Marlins that I think, and I think it's Andrew Nardi. I really do. I think that is the guy that, um, you know, stands right next to Scott if something would happen or if Scott would get traded to get saves. He was so incredible for almost all of the season that it just didn't get talked about and unfortunately gave up that big grand slam in the playoffs. So that's kind of what we remember last but to me, that is the valuable chip that the Marlins have that I don't think is going anywhere because he's, you know, serviced, you know, brand new rookie last year. And and I think that he'll have a continued impact in the eighth inning. Or again, if the team doesn't perform and, and players are traded, which is certainly possible, you never know. I think he could take over as a closer uh, with the Marlins. It was a great draft pick, a great, uh, a great player and missed a little time last year. But every time, guys, that guy came into the game. A lot of times it was trouble. There was like a guy on, and there was like, and he got out of it like every single time. So yeah. I want to see more of him. To me, that would be my reliable breakout sort of star. The starting pitching, I, I don't know. I mean, at this point, is it is it who, 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 which direction could I go? George Soriano, I, I don't know. I I don't know what they're going to go with. Yeah, Soriano has had the best spring of any Marlins pitcher, I think. And it doesn't – He last time he pitched in a Grateful League game, Eli and I were there. He only threw one inning, and that was before the whole I know. year. So how, can they go to, how can they start him? I'm not sure. Right. And then this guy McGawkin, I don't know anything about him. He, he started, I guess, yeah, uh, a couple days ago or whenever that was. And, you know, good. I mean, if, if I'm not mistaken, you guys are going to have to go back this and check or if it was just something that I heard. But I think that up until – like recently, Lazardo had said that he was still like perfecting himself. I think something like I don't know what the quote was exactly. <laughs> and that, that was like, oh my gosh, like him, like like not hurt, but like doesn't feel like ready to go either. Like, and he's starting opening day now. The other day he said he is, so that's good. But like, really, what are we dealing with here? <laughs> like, this, this seems like it seems like a lot. So they'll get Garrett back. I think they're. Ma I think we're all making too much of that too. He's a nice pitcher. He's a middle of the rotation guy. It's like he's being painted as like, oh, once we get him back, he's the savior. Come on, like, please, no. like, let's get real here. It's it's going to be a work in progress. Maybe they'll sign someone that I'm not aware of, but I've I've given the names out already as far as some of them that I think could be an option. And, and you guys mentioned Hoeing is another one. Yeah, I think they would love to have had Soriano go more than one inning in that last game, but they just, I guess they didn't know they were optimistic regarding Yuri, and now they really are 
are kind of shit out of luck. This sort of reminds me of that 2013 spring training where I think it was Henderson Alvarez and Nathan Evaldi, both of them, last week of spring training, hit the IL, and that's where they had to call up Jose Fernandez to make that opening day rotation. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Like, last week of spring training, they dropped like maybe Max, Meyer will, maybe Max Meyer will be that guy. That would definitely send a different message at the start of the baseball yeah. season. I would say that yeah. if it's not him and it's someone else, I think a different message is sort of sent at that point, which is kind of like, all right, we're just going to, you know, kind of go with what we got. By the way, I, you know, I, I kind of see it that the same way a little bit here. I, I am a fan of everything that Peter Bendix has done so far. And I really think that there's going to be a, a bright future with all the hiring that he made. And I, I do believe in a lot of the concepts I've talked to him a number of times. Uh, he has a way of, of wanting to do things and he is going to stick to that plan. There really is not a lot of deviation. I feel like Tim Anderson was a little bit of a deviation just because he looked at the landscape at short and said, we just don't have it. Got to have somebody. But beyond that, there, there are players to sign and start and he has not signed any of them so that's where we're at yeah and and if this season sort of does go that way that route a lot of guys will wonder some of them that are on the major league team right now probably won't be there post july and a Maybe. lot of younger guys that have yet to debut will get their opportunities whether it's a griffin conine or whether it's uh another younger guy but i'm just curious craig is there a, a, a somewhat notable prospect name that you think is going to get his first big league opportunity, like a sort of Dane Myers type of last year who was going to get his chance to to hit or pitch pretty regularly for this team that they like? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Not, not, not that I not that I see. And, again, you guys are covering this a lot closer than I am, but I, I don't particularly see someone who's an everyday player that's – I would love to see Griffin Conine, of course. I mean, be more than just Griffin Conine playing. It would be a great story for the Marlins too. But – not really. No, I, I don't see that. I, I just, I, I, I really am surprised they didn't make some sort of trade. I, I genuinely thought they were going to make a deal this off season and inject three or four kids into the farm system. And they didn't. And it, uh, listen, at some point that's going to have to happen. They, they really right. need to rebuild the offensive system. Right. And Luzardo is set to make his opening day start just nine days from now. And I, I guess best case scenario they were hoping for is maybe he has a great first half and then, that's when you try and inject some talent. Yeah. yeah you know, um, you know, you know, what's funny. There's, I, I don't think this is going to happen, but it, it did cross my mind several years ago. I looked it up. I don't remember ex the exact year. The, the Padres, remember, you know, the Padres once every five or six years decide that they're like going to win the world series and like yes. do everything and they get it's rid fun. of everybody the next year. And everyone yeah. says the Padres are great, right? Like it's amazing how that works. AJ so you, you guys could go back and look. It was early on in the Preller, uh, Preller era. They, uh, the Braves, the Braves, who were not in as good a position as the Marlins at the time, that as the Marlins are now, maybe a, maybe a few ticks below because they were about to go in a rebuild, but they did have Freddie Freeman, decided to trade Kimbrel the night before the season to the Padres. Wow. I'm not saying that that's going to happen with the Marlins here where all of a sudden – the Browns are moving to Indianapolis, like in the peak of the night, like in the middle of the night here. But it would not shock me. I, I don't think they're going to do it. I don't think so. But it wouldn't shock me. Like I would be like, yeah, like yeah, I get it. Like I, I understand, and and I know that that's not painting the half full glass of optimism. But with without Sandy and Yuri, I, I, I just I don't know. Like how do you how do you get through a season? Without those guys, maybe you guys have a better idea. I don't know how they do. I don't know either. I don't. And it's funny that you mentioned Kimbrel because the Marlins do have a closer, Tanner Scott, who I, right. I was pretty confident that they were going to deal at some point. He's one year left. He's never going to pitch as well as he did last year, I don't think. He's not off to the great, greatest start this spring. But maybe they do trade a pretty big asset in Tanner Scott before the season or early well, on. Or, or somebody else. But, but maybe not. And maybe that's just me thinking like crazy talk. It's, it's very possible. But right. Like if, if I thought, you know, you know, to pull the shoot here right before the season starts and just be like, all right, we are who we are. I mean, it's not that I want them to do that, but if you're not going to go out and you're not going to get like uh, Montgomery or you're not going to take a shot with Bauer or something like that, like if you're not going to do those things 
and you're just going to go with what you got, I, I, I got to be honest, I am not confident in just going with what you got in that starting rotation. I am not. I, I could be now, and people could say, oh, my gosh, A.J. Puck, first start, five innings, one in, five innings, one run, seven Ks. Second start, six innings. Third start, eight innings. Fourth start, five. And then all of a sudden, he's at his limit from last year. And then every inning he throws from that point forward is more than he had the year before. Like, does anybody consider that? And then Trevor Rogers, like, how many innings is that kind of guy going to throw? Like, I, where are these innings going to come from in, in July, in August, in September? Where? Your, your guess is as good as mine. It's, uh, Trevor Bauer, is that a name that has ever been discussed within the organization? Any organization? No, believe me, I, I've asked a lot, though. I, he would pitch for the league minimum. I, I, would, I mean, I think, I think I would do it. I would do it. You need to do it. Not only what you have I would do it. To, you know, I would do it. When, when we're mentioning Brian Hoeing facing the same lineup more than once here and come opening week, I think you have to swallow your pride. And, and I would do that. it. I would do it. Trevor Bauer is going to sign with somebody over the next year. He's going to yeah. sign with someone. I'm positive. He's going to get a, He's going to get a contract with someone. He'll sign a one-year deal with player bonuses. And I don't know if it's going to work out or not, but uh, you know, you talk about a possible landing spot that's soft where yeah. you could sort of like, you know, take a little PR hit for a bit and then, you know, get over it. I think this would be the spot. I do. I, I, don't, I, agree. I don't think there's intense coverage here. And, uh, you, you know, the guy, the guy throws, the guy gives you innings and then July comes and his war is four. And what is that guy going to get back in return in a trade? If, if that's the scenario that they go, right. I, I think desperate times sometimes call for desperate measures, as they say. And you're, you're talking about a very uh, messy situation in the rotation. So I, I didn't think that I would be saying that here, but I think I would do it. I think I would pull the trigger on it and park them in AAA, you know, talk to them, say, hey, look, here's the deal. This is our plan. Whether you like, if, if you like it, great. If not, then it's not for you, but you're, you're in AAA. And we'll, we'll tell you when we need you and see what happens and let, let it let, you know, a few starts, let it play out. Everything looks good. Here we go, 100 innings. And then end of July, if, if it's done, you, you know, and everything goes well, I mean, what, what could you get back for that guy if things go really well? And what could you put back into the organization for a, like a trade for a minor league player? It would be pretty significant for me. Yeah, and he's pretty stretched out too. He's been pitching, so it it wouldn't be a you know a, a Jordan Montgomery type of thing where they have to start from scratch. No, he's been pitching, so he is kind of ready to go. Really, very complicated, very complicated with everything that's happened. And uh, you know, I, I am just, I happen to be one of those people that that believe that people should get a second chance. Like I, I, I like I, I think myself included have made mistakes in life no doubt about it and have been given second chances at things i think everybody at some point uh deserves it and i don't think this guy is never going to pitch again i think he's going to be back at some point some team is going to do it whether you know it's you know kansas city or miami or you know uh, tampa or one of those teams where it's like crazy horrible pr for like a couple of weeks and then all of a sudden it's like oh the guy's pitching every five days you know yeah yeah um eli anything left from you sir like, oh, well, I, I would just I would be very shocked if that happens just because there's we've seen any guys that are not any guys, but there just seem to be particular cases of guys either directly or tangentially connected to domestic violence or other crimes where it I mean, it just seems like there is an unwritten agreement among these major league teams to stay away. The, the idea that I don't think there's anything stopping any team from signing him. I, I don't think so. I, I've. Eli, your sentiment has been shared with me that MLB has this thing where it's like the secret, you, you can't sign this guy. I don't believe that to be the case. Just my opinion. I don't believe that. And the guy made horrible mistakes and admitted that he made horrible mistakes. And by the way, could make horrible mistakes again. And the deal, and it could end up looking horribly. But this is, I mean, this we're kind of, we're kind of calling for a desperate situation here, are we not? Like this is as 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 desperate as it's going to get to open a season with a rotation. Now, the other school of thought is if you really don't care and it's just like, all right, we know who we are. We're 70 something wins. It is what it is. Then, yeah, then you know what, then don't do it. But if you really want to fight and you really want to give yourself a shot, then I think this is the kind of flyer that you take in a desperate situation with a Sandy, with a, with a Yuri with all the other guys, no way. 
But when you're down this many, I, I probably would do it. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be crushed for it. And it's not as bad as a Julio Urias situation where it's multiple times, correct? It's well, I don't think Trevor Bauer was arrested for anything, was he? Right. No, Julio Urias, he's got he's gotten he's got arrested. Yeah. Twice. No, there's 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 definitely a difference there. But I look, look I agree. I am obviously very much against any domestic violence, and I get it. It's just what I don't want to do, guys, is look back two years from now and say, you know, look at this guy. He's pitching for this team. You know, they could have just done it and, you know, and made a trade and some other team took the shot. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he never will play again. You know, I don't yeah. know. And that's why, because there's a lot of guys, the Rolis Chapman, Domingo Herman. there's a lot of guys out there that have been connected to these things and have actually been found guilty. And they, there's given second chances. Bauer is an interesting case, a very interesting oh, case, yeah. but I'm not. Ozuna's Ozuna the worst one of them all, and he yeah. got slapped with Ozuna, a slap Ozuna Ozuna had an unbelievable year last year with the Braves. Forty home runs for the Braves. They're going to trade yeah. him for Garcia. So, and so sometimes Gar- you take a shot. We'll see. I, I don't. Th- I agree with Eli, though. I don't. I don't see it happening either. Right. Well, I think that's it. I guess one last thing I want to touch on really quick: Are okay. Garcia looking good this spring? Um, Avisael is. Uh, <laughs> If, are they how short of a leash would they have with this player? Is it going to be another full year at least, or what are their thoughts? Samson has no idea. Of- no idea. Thought last year would have been the end. I thought there was no scenario that he'd be back again, and here we are. Uh, to his credit, he's looked much better the last week or two. Maybe that's bought him a, a roster spot for a bit. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, really, the Rays do tend to grind these guys out. The Rays way yeah. is sort of to, uh, you know, to if you don't, if you can't make it, they just they let you go. So I don't know if if uh, Peter Bendix is going to subscribe to that. Like over the course of the season, maybe that's where it's at. But if you remember a guy who used to play for the Marlins and was let go by the Rays previous Corey Dickerson, he was an All Star, and the Rays cut him. You know, so I, I could see that happening. But I, I do think they're probably going to keep him on the twenty six man open the, the season. Right. Well, I guess Dane Miles will have to wait his turn at some point. All right, Craig, we really appreciate it. As always, this is at least, what, the sixth, seventh time on a Fish on First affiliated show? So uh, Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Keep up the great work. I'm always following. It's just life has really, you know, my daughter's getting ready to go to college. My son is playing very busy uh, travel ball. I'm working six days a week on Sports Grid. I, I try to do as much as I can. Uh, you know, covering the Marlins and doing what I do. And I definitely still very much stay in touch. So I know exactly what's going on with everything. But, you know, when le- when life presents you with some wonderful family opportunities, it's hard mm-hmm. for me to, you know, to, to not take advantage of those. I mean, my daughter's been uh, performing in some incredible plays at the Sunrise Civic Center. She's applying to all these theater colleges for theater and mm-hmm. my son, I mean, she, you guys see some social media stuff, but I mean, he is at such, I mean, he, we switched teams. We're on a new team this year in plantation and he's been like doing like incredible. And it's, it's like, how can I miss that? You know, like I, I can't, I can't not be there for those moments. So it kind of hinders my ability to do as much as I would like to do, but I feel really fortunate to be in the spot that I am. Yes, I I would absolutely agree. Thank you again, Craig, for being generous with your time. Uh, That's it for Fish and Filter, presented to you by MPT College Consulting. Peace out, and as always, go fish.